everyone, I want to share with you a new finding from a study from last month that shows that people with diagnosed celiac disease have increased risk for bone fracture. This is bad news for someone like myself who has celiac disease. And what they found is by looking at lots of other studies, kind of what we call a meta-analysis, they found that people with diagnosed celiac disease are 30% more likely to have a bone fracture. And specifically, they are 69% more likely to have a hip fracture. Now, I'm sure we've all heard about hip fractures. Usually it's our, you know, our elderly relatives that fall down and get a hip fracture, and sometimes it kills them and debilitates them. So we definitely want to do what we can to avoid this. Now, I want to make a few points. First thing is, what did diagnose celiac disease mean? Well, it meant that people in these studies either had positive blood antibodies for tissue transglutaminase or anti-endomesial antibodies, or they had the positive small bowel biopsy, and they had clinical symptoms. Now, there's some problems, as you may know, that I've talked about before with these diagnostic criteria for celiac disease. And just briefly, I want to tell you that a, a lot of people with celiac disease, meaning they've got the positive antibodies and they've got the, you know, the clinical symptoms of having a problem with wheat, they don't have a positive biopsy. So that's not a great marker by itself. Now, some people, when, you, when they get the blood test, they don't test positive for tissue transglutaminase and they don't test positive for anti-mesial anti antibodies, but they also still have a problem with gluten. And some people that have uh, symptoms don't have GI symptoms. Now, a lot of people watching, and maybe you think that the most common symptoms you would have if you had gluten sensitivity or celiac would be GI symptoms. This kind of makes sense. However, that's not true. Uh, the research is really clear that the most common manifestation of celiac disease are neurological symptoms and hormone symptoms, not GI symptoms. However, in this study of studies, they found that people that had clinical symptoms, meaning they had iron deficiency anemia, diarrhea, uh, bloating, things like that, those people that had the, the diagnostic criteria that they used were increased risk for bone fraction. I just want to take a couple seconds and explain three different mechanisms about why this is most likely occurring. A couple they mentioned, one I'll, I'll mention that they didn't. The first is, is that we know that celiac disease, you know, it's an autoimmune attack. It destroys your small intestine. And eventually what it does, it destroys your ability to absorb nutrients, uh, be they small nutrients or big nutrients. Calcium and vitamin D are two of the nutrients that we know are affected. And those are extremely important for bone mineral density. One of the things I thought was funny that they kind of mentioned, which I think is a weak argument, is that one of the reasons people might have had uh, this increased risk for bone fracture is that they were on a gluten-free diet, which is low in minerals. Well, not necessarily. I mean, as I'm going to talk about, there's a right way and, and really a wrong way to be on a gluten-free diet. And I thought that was kind of a, a weak attempt to, you know, well, they probably were just doing it to be scientific, you know, because in scientific studies, you can never say this equals this. It's always about probabilities and may and that kind of thing. So anyway, first mechanism is malabsorption. Second mechanism for why celiac disease can lead to bone fracture is cytokines. Now, cytokines are these immune system messengers that you've got floating around that you've got a lot of if you've got an autoimmune condition. And cytokines are really good at suppressing things. And one of the things we know they can do is suppress bone formation. So if you've got an autoimmune condition, really any autoimmune condition, this can lead to osteoporosis. But if you combine that with malabsorption caused by celiac disease, that's a one-two punch that could really lead to the increased risk. Now, the third thing, which they did not talk about, but I will mention to you, is expanded autoimmune attack. Now, when you've got any autoimmune condition, it's easy, if you don't do the right things, to get another autoimmune condition. And one of the things that can happen when you have celiac disease, which is an autoimmune condition, it can turn into an attack on something else. And one of the things that we know can happen is an autoimmune attack and destruction of osteocytes, which are bone cells. And if you get destruction of osteocytes, that is an autoimmune cause for osteoporosis, which would lead to an increased risk for fracture. Now, one of the things that I want to make clear to you is that there's a right way and a wrong way to go about dealing with this. And the right way, of course, is you've got to be on a gluten-free diet. But You've got to do things such as avoid cross-reactors, make sure your gut is being healed, not just simply, you know, try to avoid uh, gluten. Now, one of the things that the research paper points out is that we know that if you avoid gluten and you supplement with calcium and vitamin D, you can actually improve your bone density, which is great. But it is more complicated than that. Even though you may be improving your bone density, which is, of course, kind of the point of the video, you can still have autoimmune destruction. You can still have cytokines suppressing things. So what I want to make sure you do is work with someone who understands that celiac disease is complex. There's more than one way to get diagnosed with it. And that there's issues with leaky gut, issues with cytokines. There's issues with knowing how much vitamin D, what kind of vitamin D, what form of vitamin D should you be using. And really probably most importantly out of all those things, 
knowing how to do a gluten-free diet the right way. Now, I've got a lot of other videos you can look for that explain some of the mistakes people make when they go on a gluten-free diet and some of the foods you absolutely have to be avoiding. So, look those up, work with someone who understands the complexity of what I've been talking about, but know now for sure that new studies tell us that celiac disease does increase your risk for bone fracture. So take some steps to protect yourself.